Welcome to the art project. We're going to do a little, I don't know, an illusion. Kind of looks like worms or Dr. Seuss Towers or whatever. Um, this is what it looks like in the end. But let's rewind a little bit and look at it step by step. A couple of things that you might notice before it all disappears here is that there is a border around it. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how to do the border. Um, if you are not familiar with a ruler or need help with that, uh, I have other videos that you can look at. Uh, but I'm going to try and take it slow, step by step, follow along, pause the video if you need to. So, without further ado, let's start over. So you're going to need a piece of 9 by 12 drawing paper. I know in this video it looks kind of like a square, something about the angle of the video, but I actually used a 9 by 12 sheet of paper and a ruler. The first thing I did was put a put the ruler on the end of the paper, on the edge of the paper at zero, and put a mark on a half inch and 11, um, sorry, eight and a half. So right down here, put a mark at a half inch, and then over on the other side, put a mark at eight and a half. Then put it up at the top of the paper, close to the top of the paper. Put the zero on the edge again. Put the mark at half inch and eight and a half. The reason for this is that in order to draw a straight line, you have to have two marks. So as you can see here, I am lining up the eight and a half inch marks, the two marks that were at eight and a half on the ruler. Draw on a line, and I'm coming back over here to the half inch marks, and I'm lining those two up with the ruler putting the ruler on both of those two marks and drawing a line. That gives me a border on the left side and the right side. Now, putting the zero on the top edge of the paper, I'm putting a mark on the half inch and 11 and a half because the paper is 12 inches long. Then I come over here to this side and again put a mark at half inch and 11 and a half. Now I'll turn my ruler line up those two marks. Here I am putting the ruler on the 11 and a half inch marks and drawing a line. And then I go up to the top, put the mark and put the ruler on the half inch marks from the top and draw the line. After I have my border all the way around the paper, I'm going to take an eraser and erase those corners. This works whether you're using a 9 by 12 sheet of paper, an 18 by 24 sheet of paper, an 8.5 by 11 sheet of copy paper. It really doesn't matter. Uh, and I like to do the border for a couple of reasons. First of all, it gives me a little bit less paper that I have to fill up. And for you lazy art students out there, not that you are, but there are some that I'm talking to, this gives you less paper you got to fill in, so this is a good thing. The second thing is that it makes your paper or your picture look a little bit more professional when you're done, even if you don't have a frame on it. And thirdly, if you decide you really like it and you want to put a frame on it, you can put a mat and frame on it without covering up any of your picture, uh, which you have to cover up some of the paper usually when you do a mat. So I like putting a border on my paper. So I'm going to use a Sharpie pen for most of this. Uh, Sharpie pens don't bleed through the paper and they do not um, spread or bleed into the paper and they are permanent and supposed to be archival quality. First thing you do is you draw a wavy line. In retrospect, I think I would like to make my wavy line that I'm doing right here in pencil and then everything else in Sharpie. I'm putting eight small dots across this line. Uh, you can experiment with different number of dots, but I found that eight is usually a really good one, a good number. Then I do a little line that goes from the edge of the paper, um, from the first dot to the edge of the paper, and then all the rest of them are bumps. So that first line is sort of a half a hump or a half a hill, and all the rest of these until I get to the end are just little humps. And then the very last one is a half of a hump. Now I'm going to start on the second hump or the first whole hump. And I'm just going to start stacking these bowls. 
one bowl on top of another bowl on top of another bowl. This is a little tricky. If you're not careful, you start to make your bowls wider and wider and wider and they kind of balloon out. Don't do that. Just make them uh, go up one side and down the other. <clears throat> the more you do this, uh, and I highly recommend doing this on a practice sheet first, the more you do this, the better you'll get at it. And you'll start to learn what the bowls will do, what the humps will do, and how to control them going left or right or curving or getting bigger or getting smaller. But you really have to do like 500 of these little bowls, these little humps, uh, in order to get them to do that, do what you want them to do. So I don't know if you see this, but to me that looks sort of like a Dr. Seuss hump. All right, I'm now skipping to the next section, not the next section, but the, I'm doing every other section. So again, uh, I move to the third full hump and I'm just adding, like I said before, one bowl on top of the other, going up the side and down the side. Don't get wider unless you decide you want it to get wider. Uh, don't get too small unless you want it to just fade to nothing. Uh, you got to learn to kind of control. I like to go up the side of the bowl and down the side of the other bowl, other side of the bowl. Uh, different ways to say this. I don't know exactly what the best is. Just kind of like look at what I'm doing and then pause the video and try it out for yourself. All right, I'm going to fast forward to the next uh, section, the next part that's a little bit different than what I'm doing here. Uh, there are different ways to draw these bowls or these towers depending on which part you're doing. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward to the next kind. Okay, so the next kind is not a whole lot different from the way I started this. I'm going to create these little bowls. But as I do this, I'm going to kind of make it get smaller. I want there to be some other pieces in between, which you'll see in just a moment. So I'm kind of going to lean to the left. That is, I'm leaning my tower towards the one on the left and staying kind of connected to it. So it's like I'm going up the side of that tower and then down to the other side of the, of the tower that I'm working on. But notice how there's like a little wedge shape right here between the one I'm working on and the second tower that I did. It's kind of complicated to talk about, so I hope you're following along. Press pause and rewind if you need to. And I'm just going all the way off the edge. Now, here comes the third kind. This is what I call the teardrop. It's really sort of an upside down teardrop. And I just put one on top of the other, going up the tower on the left, coming across and down the tower on the right. Now, if you do this, it ends up making them look like, well, there's some folded cloth or something that's coming out of that. If you look at this whole thing as cloth, it's, I don't know, it's it's an interesting illusion. Notice how I've uh, left the tower on the right, and I'm just kind of following the tower on the left. That means that I have to do another teardrop. And by the way, when you get up to the top of the paper, just make some of them look like they're going off the top. Here's another teardrop. Now I'm trying to do these in real time, show the, this in real time so that you see what I'm doing. It's not too fast. You can understand it. But of course that makes for a very long video. So once you see this, I'm going to then just kind of speed up to the next section of doing this. Oh, before I do, when you're drawing the ones against the edge of the paper or the edge of the border, you just can make them look like they're going off of that. You know, like there's half of a hump right there all the way up. All right, let's do a little fast forward. All right, so when you get to the very end of this part, all you do is turn the whole paper around and do it again, just like you did before. 
Now the great thing about this is it doesn't always come out like perfectly even. Uh, some of the pieces get smaller, some of them get wider, some of them lean to the left, some of them lean to the right, some of them lean to the left and then curve to the right. And, and it just creates a really whimsical, fun uh, image, sort of an illusion. Now the illusion is only really half manifested here uh, in the contour lines that go around each column. Once we color it in, it's going to be even more realistic and um, impressive. So uh, I'm going to, without further ado, go ahead and fast forward this thing all the way to the end so you can see that I have done all of this. Oh, but before I do, let me tell you, it is a lot of work. It took me about an hour and a half, I think, to do all of this. But when I'm done, it's great. And right here in class, I don't have anything else to do except for the assignment that I've been given. So don't rush it. Uh, take your time. Do each one of these little curves um, as nice and neat as you can. And when you're done, you'll have something that you're pretty proud of. You'll have something that uh, is worthy of your refrigerator or hanging on your wall in your bedroom. And you can tell people, hey, I did that. But you have to take your time. Um, you may get frustrated, but just keep keep on swimming just keep on swimming all right uh let's fast forward all right um getting close to the end here sorry it's such a long video but i wanted you to be able to see how much time and effort really goes into it i wanted you to see the whole thing without anything like really cut out of it um, I wanted to explain everything thoroughly so uh, this is how it is done this is part one I'm going to do a part two where I color it in and talk a little bit about um, color schemes and uh, show you how to make it look even more realistic than it does uh, right now alright um, hope you enjoy it uh, please hit that like button subscribe if you haven't already and uh, hang out for new videos to come. Thanks.